today we will be learning about the light reaction of the photosynthesis so far we know that the photosynthesis is divided into two phases light phase and the dark phase let us now learn about the light reaction so basically what occurs during the light reaction there will be the absorption of the light by the chlorophyll a molecule and the accessory pigments will be helping here light absorption by chlorophyll a and accessory pigment after this there will be splitting of water the water will be broken all right which is also called the photolysis of water under the presence of the sunlight the water will be broken to give us proton electron and the oxygen molecule so if i need an oxygen molecule we will be breaking two molecules of water into four protons four electrons and o2 next as it is written here oxygen will be released and it is given by the water we have already studied about it next will be what will happen if the light energy is trapped it will be converted into intermediate form which is atp and nadph2 now we will be learning about the photo excitation of chlorophyll a molecule that how the photons of the light the solar energy will be trapped by the accessory pigment and the exact wavelength of light will be given to the reaction center which is going to release the electron so the photons of the light will be trapped by the accessory pigments which are present here chlorophyll b beta carotene and xanthophyll are the accessory pigment or they are also called the antenna molecule why their role is to trap the solar energy they trap the signal what is the signal here the photons of the light they trap it all right they will be arranged as light harvesting complexes which will be composed of 250 to 400 molecules the photosynthetic active radiation is 400 to 700 nanometers here they are going to trap the 400 to 700 nanometers of light and will provide the 680 to the chlorophyll p680 and 700 nanometers of light to the chlorophyll a p700 then the chlorophyll a molecule upon receiving the exact amount of the wavelength of light gets photo excited to release the electron so here you can see that's why chlorophyll a is called the reaction center because that will undergo the excitation under the photons of the light photo excitation will release the electron which will be taken by the primary acceptor now next we will be moving on to photophosphorylation in this reaction there will be synthesis of atp nadph2 and also the splitting of water now you can see here synthesis of atp from adp and inorganic phosphate with the help of light energy is called photophosphorylation under the influence of the sunlight so it is divided into two types cyclic photophosphorylation and non cyclic photophosphorylation when i say cyclic photophosphorylation what do i mean i mean that the electron which will be lost by the chlorophyll a molecule will return to it forming a cycle hence cyclic photophosphorylation non cyclic the electron which is lost by the chlorophyll a molecule will not return to it it will be given to another component nadp plus for the formation of nadph2 after this let us move on to what is cyclic photophosphorylation as we have discussed that during cyclic photophosphorylation the electron would return to the chlorophyll a molecule as you can see here there is chlorophyll a what type of chlorophyll a is present ps1 p700 it is going to trap 700 nanometers of light when it traps the 700 nanometers of light it is going to release the electrons the electrons will be released under the influence of the photons of the light hence the name photo excitation of chlorophyll a molecule 
Now this electron which is lost by the chlorophyll A molecule will be trapped by the primary acceptor. Earlier we studied that when the reaction center chlorophyll A releases the electron, primary acceptor is going to take it. Now what would be the primary acceptor? In case of cyclic photophosphorylation, it is FRS, ferredoxin reducing substrate, which is an iron sulfur protein. Now this ferredoxin reducing substrate will take the excited electron. The concept here basically is the excited electron which has been excited by the chlorophyll A molecule under the influence of the photons of light will be carrying energy within it. That electron will move from different electron carrier and at places it will be helping the plastoquinone, a mobile electron carrier to get reduced and pull proton. Now from FRS, the electron will be given to the ferredoxin. It goes to ferredoxin. Now from ferredoxin, the electron would go to cytochrome B. When the electron moves from the ferredoxin to cytochrome B, there is a mobile electron carrier, plastoquinone. It will not only take the electron, but also the proton and get reduced to form PQH2. Now the proton will be taken from the stroma of the chloroplast and then PQH2 will again shift the proton to the lumen of the thylakoid. Now again the electron from the cytochrome B is going to move to the cytochrome F. When this occur, once again plastoquinone is going to pull the protons from the stroma of the chloroplast into the lumen of the thylakoid. Now, as you can see, cytochrome F, the electron will now go to plastocyanin. It has lost its energy, will return to chlorophyll A. So, the electron under the photons of the light influence was released by the chlorophyll A molecule, P700 has returned to chlorophyll A. Hence, the reaction is called cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, the protons which are present inside the lumen of the thylakoid, they will create a proton gradient, higher concentration of the proton. A type of diffusion will occur, these protons will move out of the lumen of the thylakoid into the stroma with the help of F0, F1 particle. Here the F0, F1 particles are called Racker's particle. So th when the protons move out from the lumen of the thylakoid into the stroma, these protons will be helping in generating ATP. Now at two places since the protons were pulled, here in the cyclic photophosphorylation, Per cycle, we will see the generation of 2 ATP. So, the summation of cyclic photophosphorylation is only one photosystem is involved, which is PS1, P700. And the electron, which is lost by the chlorophyll A molecule, will be moving on to the different electron carriers and return to chlorophyll A, resulting in formation of 2 ATP. Now, after completing cyclic photophosphorylation, you know that what is synthesized here. But when I started light reaction, I told you that during the light reaction, there will be splitting of water. There will be formation of NADPH2 as well. There will be involvement of the photosystem 2 as well. But nothing is being released here. Nothing is being used here. Why? Because that is a part we will be studying under non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic photophosphorylation gives us only two ATP. The splitting of water, formation of NADPH and the involvement of two photosystem are part of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now let us move on to non-cyclic photophosphorylation. As you can see, the name suggests non-cyclic photophosphorylation. The electron which is lost by the chlorophyll P680 will not return to it. Hence the name non-cyclic. Now, 
Here in this type of photophosphorylation, two photosystems are involved, PS1 and PS2. PS2 will have P680 chlorophyll A, PS1 P700 chlorophyll A. Let us now see what will be the events here. The chlorophyll A, P680, which is a part of PS2 photosystem, will be trapping the 680 nanometers of light and will be releasing the electron and will be releasing the electron. Now, when this electron is released, it will be accepted by the pheophyton. So, this photo excited electron will be first accepted by pheophyton. Now, the electron will again move to the different electron carriers. This electron from pheophyton will now go to cytochrome B6F complex. via the mobile electron carrier plastoquinone. Once again, plastoquinone will take the electron, will take the proton from the stroma of the chloroplast and will become PQH2. And then that proton will be returned to the lumen of the thylakoid. Again, there will be increase in the proton gradient and again there will be synthesis of one ATP molecule as you can see here. Now, this electron will next go to the PS1, P700. P700 will again take it and release. It will again pass to the different electron carriers and will be going to the NADP+. Plus. NADP plus will accept this electron and then will accept the proton from the stroma and that proton is also released by the protolysis of water. Then NADP plus will become NADPH. Now as you can see here the electron is not returning to the chlorophyll A P680 then how will it compensate for it? There will be the photolysis of water when the water molecule is broken along with proton and oxygen electron is released that electron is going to compensate for this lost electron by the p680 so during non-cyclic photophosphorylation as you can see there is photolysis of water there is also formation of nadph so one non-cyclic photophosphorylation will provide us 1 ATP, 2 NADPH2 and a molecule of oxygen. Let us now solve some questions here. Which of the following are formed by the Z scheme of photophosphorylation? Non-cyclic photophosphorylation is also called the Z scheme. What are formed over there? There is splitting of water, so oxygen is released. ATP is formed and NADPH2 is formed. So, our answer would be all of this. This is formed, yes. ATP, yes, one molecule. Oxygen, yes, a molecule of oxygen. So, our answer would be all of these. Next question is, during splitting of water, H plus is ultimately captured by, it is taken by NADP plus to form NADP H. So, the answer would be NADP. So, that NADPH plus will be formed. That's it. This is all about the light reaction. Mm -hmm.